Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 20 Part 4. The name of this build is Event Horizon. This is the final part of the build log. I'm going to start this video by completing the system. There's still one more thing left to do, which is the cable management. After that, we'll take a good look around the finished product and I'll cover some of the things we haven't yet taken a look at, such as all of the fittings I've used in this build. We'll take a look around the back of the build. And then finally, I'll include the test results, the performance, temperature, and noise output results. But before I get started, there's something very important that I need to briefly mention. I started this channel to share my knowledge and to share information. That has always been my main focus, and hopefully it always will be. But because of this, I never really went down the path of working with companies, advertising, sponsorship, like a lot of other people do. I did a little bit of this, but I'm sure it's obvious to everybody that I went down the path of self-funding. And I will admit that it's been an incredible struggle and challenge. Because you have to understand, before I started this channel, I was already running Singularity Computers as a successful business. And when you're running a business, your focus is obviously profit, running the business as best as you possibly can, making as much as you can. But once I started this channel, my focus changed to sharing my knowledge, to making the best possible content, to constantly stepping things up. And that is where the challenge lies. I've loved every minute of this channel, and if it was up to me, I would never do anything else. You know, I love what I do. But it's always been about me trying to find the time and the resources to continue making videos, but also to continue stepping things up. And everything I've done since I started this channel has been about that. You know, even including the workshop. I had goals for the workshop to have cameras running all the time, to make daily videos. I mean, everyone has setbacks, but my point here is that you don't get anything in return for sharing information. You know, I could be focusing on on advertising or, well, for example, and no one actually knows this, but you don't build systems like this to make a profit. This is a system that you would build for yourself. The time that goes in, it's about a passion, but most importantly, it's about the content, the videos, because I know that this is what you all want to see, what you love, and what you came to this channel for. Where else can you go and see build log after build log? And it's also the content that I can best share my knowledge with. Those of you who enjoy our content, who like what we do, who are fans of Singularity Computers, there are a number of things that you can do if you want to see us improve and to grow, to make more videos, to improve the quality of our videos, the variety, and all of the other goals we are working towards in the future, check the video description. And also coming up in the next month, we're going to be launching a couple of new ideas which are really critical for the future of Singularity Computers. And I'm going to make a video coming up on how you can get involved. Also in the meantime, as always, I'm working very hard to continue funding the channel and I've just launched my very first mass production product and I've had a huge amount of setbacks trying to launch my first products and I'm very proud to have launched something at this level of quality. It's a reservoir mount called Ethereal. You can check it out on the Singularity Computers store. The system is now complete, so you can see I've finished the cable management. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the fittings. I get a lot of questions about fittings, usually one or two in particular, so I'm going to cover all of the fittings I've used in this build in detail. They're all Bits Power Black Sparkle, and I've used 16 millimeter hardline compression fittings right through. You can see that some of these fittings still need a clean. This is something I always do when I finish my systems. So first of all, the CPU loop coming out of the pump, a 20 millimeter extension, and a 90 degree single rotary fitting. Two 90 degree single rotary fittings going in and out of the memory water block. Same thing on the CPU water block, but with 30 millimeter extension fittings to maintain the same height all the way across this configuration. Then the same thing on the second memory water block, two 90 degree single rotaries. And then going into the top radiator, we just have a straight 16 millimeter hardline compression fitting now, this is where it gets interesting. Because the holes are not big enough or they're not in the right place on the Case Labs Magnum TH10A, it means that I have to use this massive amount of fittings here. So first of all, I have a mini D-plug which makes this entire config easier to install and uninstall. I then have a female to female fitting, two 90 degree dual rotaries, a large size telescopic fitting, another 90 degree dual, a 90 degree single, and a 30 millimeter extension. 
coming out of the radiator, a 25 millimeter extension, a 90 degree jewel, and then a straight hard line compression fitting going back into the top of the reservoir with a through panel fitting, a small sized telescopic fitting, and this is actually the smallest size, there is three sizes, a 90 degree single rotary, and a 25 millimeter extension. For both of the drainage systems, I've used the same configuration, a 90 degree jewel, mini D-plug, and mini valve. Same thing coming out of the pump for the GPU loop, a 20 millimeter extension, a 90 degree single, 90 degree single going into the top of the graphics cards. And then we have 16 millimeter hardline compressions making up the parallel configuration, another 90 degree single coming out of the bottom of the graphics cards, and then a straight hardline compression going into the radiator. And then again, I have the same configuration going between the two radiators at the bottom. So mini D plug, female to female fitting, two 90 degree jewels, a large size telescopic, another 90 degree jewel, 90 degree single, and a 30 millimeter extension. I have a shorter fitting coming out of the radiator compared to the top, a 20 millimeter extension, a 90 degree jewel, now this next fitting is the answer to a question that I saw in the last video, which is how do you use fittings for the bends with 16 millimeter tube and 16 millimeter hardline compression fittings? Well, this is a 90 degree fitting with female G1 quarter inch threads on both sides. So you can use whatever fittings in combination with it that you want to. You can see on one side I've used a 16 millimeter hardline compression. On the other side, I've used a Q fitting. I then have a 90 degree jewel rotary, and then at the top here, another 90 degree jewel, and then going back into the top of the reservoir, the same configuration, a small size telescopic fitting, 90 degree single, and a 25 millimeter extension fitting. So I haven't shown any shots of around the back of the build here since a lot earlier in the build log, and I actually did this by accident, but there wasn't much happening back here anyway, mostly just custom wiring, which has been a bit of a mess up until now, because I tried a number of different configurations for the Aquero 6. I've been playing around with things a bit. I did mention earlier in the build log that I didn't have any PWM fan splitters in stock, so I had to use three pin fan splitters as placeholders. So when the PWM splitters arrived, I ended up dismantling all of the wiring that I'd done for the fans and redoing a lot of it differently. You know, I changed the positions of the splitters from around the, the backs of the radiators to the ends to make it more accessible. And there's a few di other different things that I did for the way I was running the fub work and the pumps. You can see this extra splitter here. That's actually for the two D5 pumps because the pumps are aqua computer pumps and they have something called the aqua bus. And there's one aqua bus connector, well there's actually two on the Aquero 6, but there's only one of them that's designed to run pumps. It's also designed to run a bunch of other different components with Aquabus. It can run the fab work, but I decided to only run the two D5 pumps off the Aquabus. And the great thing about the Aquabus is it runs a whole bunch of different things through it. You know, you can run a temp sensor on the pumps, flow, and a whole bunch of other different things but I decided to run the fab work off USB and you'll see why once I give you a look at the Aqua Computer software coming up. But there is a massive amount of custom wiring in this build. I know it doesn't look like it now that all of the wiring is nicely managed and tied back, it doesn't look like much at all. But with all of the fans in this build, the Aquero 6, the fab work, you know, the dual loops, the lighting, it's a lot of custom wiring, even just for the fab work itself, for the lighting. I mean, we have a Molex power, we have the two cables going to the two LED strips and a USB cable. You know, we then have the extra splitter for the Aquabus for the 2D5 pumps. We have the four splitters for all of the fans and you know, there's certainly a lot of wiring here and you can see how good the custom wiring from ice mods looks how well it's worked out back here now you can see that I've used a dust filter here the same Silverstone dust filters that I've used right through the build so all of the intakes have one of these dust filters so there's four intakes on the front panel and then there's eight intakes on the bottom panel and underneath we also have the Silverstone dust filters 
This is a small mod that I've done to reinforce this length of tube. It's the longest length of tube in the build by far. It goes from the lower radiator all the way up to the top of the reservoir for the GPU loop. And it's just a small piece of one millimeter aluminum panel, which is sandblasted. It's bolted onto the two fans and it works in combination with the Q fitting and the larger size plug that I have underneath the Q fitting. So it just sits down onto this panel and that's really fine on its own if the system isn't going to be moved, but for shipping I've added a small piece of adhesive underneath which holds this length of tube very firmly in position. So finally we can take a look at the finished build in its entirety with all of the outer panels installed on the case. And you've already had a good look at the custom paint job previously in the build log, but now you can really see what I was going for. And considering the theme of this build, a nice little touch that I really like, and this is why I actually did this, I put the flake on the custom reservoir mounting plate because I knew that it would reflect through the coolant in the reservoirs. And that's also another reason why I went for the clear coolant in one of the reservoirs to increase this effect as you walk around the build. It creates the kind of warping effect that you'd expect to see around a black hole and the flake looks like stars. So very happy with the way that's turned out. The system is now up and running and you can see how the lighting has turned out. So I have an LED strip at the top and bottom in the same position in between the radiators and the mid plate. But the lighting on this motherboard is just awesome. Absolutely love this idea from MSI and I hope to see it on more motherboards and you can now see it breathing in RGB mode going through all of the different colors so obviously it doesn't suit this build but very cool to have all of these different options depending on what your color scheme is going to be and you can see that it's definitely bright enough and it's spread out enough on the board to give really nice balance but none of the light sources are visible, so it gives the perfect soft glow. It's just absolutely perfect, and it looks amazing in blue for this build and just matches up so well with the lighting from the fab work and LED strips. So now for a look at the thermals in this build. The thermals are very basic. We have the fan in the rear compartment drawing air in for the hard drive cage. So there's one fan drawing air in, in the rear compartment, one fan drawing air out, which is on the power supply. And then we have three fans drawing air in through the, the front panel on the other side in the main compartment, but there's so many holes through from the main compartment to the rear compartment that that's going to create positive pressure right through the entire case, both compartments. The radiators equal each other out because we have eight fans drawing air in and eight fans exhausting but obviously overall there is positive pressure which is what we want in combination with dust filters on all of the intakes. Now for a brief listen to the noise output from this build this doesn't give you any idea of the actual volume only of the type of noise. So first of all the system at idle and then the system at load. Now we've already taken a look at how I've configured the Aquero 6 physically, how I've connected it all up. For those of you who missed it, I have connected up the 16 radiator fans via four PWM splitters and connected the splitters to the four PWM fan connectors on the Aquero 6. I've connected up the two Aquacomputer Aquabus D5 pumps via a PWM splitter to the Aquabus connector, the high Aquabus connector on the Aquero 6 and I've connected up the temperature sensors onto the pumps through the Aquabus for the water cooling loops for both and the only other connection I have on the Aquero 6 is a single temperature sensor for ambient temperature the fab work I have running off USB. Now what you're looking at here is the Aquacomputer Aquaseat software for the Aquero 6 and a bunch of the other Aquacomputer components but if you are not going to run this software for the Aquero 6, you might as well just get yourself a normal fan controller because this is what the Aquero is all about. Take a look at the configuration options here. They are absolutely epic. And I'm now going to briefly take you through how I've configured it, configured the software, 
which is what it's all about. But coming up, I am going to do a full guide on how to do this. So this is just a monitoring page. You can see I have the coolant temperatures for CPU and GPU loops, the ambient temperature, which is inside of the case. I have the RPMs for the pumps and fans, and I have some component temperatures. Now the component temperatures for you know CPU, motherboard, graphics, you actually have to set up using different software. I use A to 64, and you have to set them up through the sensor area of the AquaSuite software via the software temp sensors, because the AquaSuite doesn't pick up those temp sensors. It only picks up Aqua Computer temp sensors. And without these extra software temp sensors, you're not going to be able to do what I've done here, which is set up curves for the fan RPMs and pump RPMs. Now you can see this first curve here is for the two sets of fans on the two radiators for the CPU loop. So for those fans, I have them set up based on the CPU loop coolant temperature. And they start at 0% power, 0 RPM, at 20 degrees Celsius. And then they ramp up to 100% fan RPM at 45 degrees Celsius. And that is the coolant temperature. I've done the exact same thing for the GPU loop. Now for the pumps, it's a bit different because you obviously can't have them going down to zero or you're going to have big problems because the temp sensor is at the pump. And if the pumps go down to zero, no coolant movement, there's, the coolant's just gonna heat up around the components and you know, it's going to fry your components. So I have the pump minimum RPM at 10%, no matter what, it's always at 10%, until the CPU goes over 40 degrees, and then it starts to ramp up between 40 degrees and 70 degrees. I've done the same thing for the CPU and graphics cards. And you can see the curves I have set up. You can plot these however you want. So we have on the left, percentage of RPM and across the bottom, the temperatures of the component that it's based on. So this is what is really, really cool about the Aquero. This is what I love most about it. And this is what I really use it for setting up these curves because it means an incredibly silent system. So this is the setup here for the fans. You can have them power controlled, speed controlled, PWM controlled. You can have start boost. Some fans don't like to start. If they don't start at, you know, 100%, I mean, you might have it kicking in at 10% like I do here. And sometimes it's not enough power to get it rotating. So that's where start boost comes in. All of the little things that, you know, Aqua Computer have thought of, this software is just incredibly cool. And so is the Aquero, that it's capable of all of this. And here you can see the Aquabus pumps, even though they're connected up to the same header, it picks up the two separate pumps. But to be able to do this, it's a little bit difficult. You have to connect them up via USB first, and then you have to change the priority from USB to Aquabus, and you have to give them both a different address, USB address. So I think it starts at 12, so I have one at 12, one at 13. And then I was going to set up the fab work at 14, but I decided to connect it up via USB because that could be set up here as well. But you can see for the pumps, I can have them manually RPM controlled or set by controller. So obviously I have them set by controller because I have them running on a curve. Also you have automatic speed by PWM. This here is the user interface setup. We have the setup for what appears on the front of the Aquero 6. And check out the available screens here. We have monitoring for just everything. It's, it's amazing. And I have obviously the Singularity Computers logo set up on the, on the front, which you're going to see shortly. And here we have alarm configuration. So I've set it up for CPU and graphics card temperatures. And we have a warning, which I've set up as a single beep, an alarm, a solid beep. Also for the pumps, if they go down to zero RPM. And here we have profiles. So you can set up multiple profiles, restore them at any time, save them on the system. You can also see connected Aquabus devices here. And you can see the addresses 12 and 13, which I've set up for the pumps. And here we have the setup for the fab work 
So the sensors area is you can set up different colors based on different temperatures and different sensors. All of the different options here for what the colors can be based on and how they run. Very, very cool. I've just manually changed them to blue to fit the color scheme. But, you know, this is just a brief look at a little bit of what the Aquarius 6 is capable of in combination with this software. Now the overclocks I achieved for this build was 4.6 GHz, 1.25 volts on the CPU, 2666 megahertz C11 on the memory, and 50 megahertz over on the core and memory with a maximum power limit for the graphics cards. So next up, the test results, starting with the temperature results. Now for all of my temperature testing, I adjust my ambient to 20 degrees Celsius. Each result is an average of the cores and I cold boot before every test. You can see I've now installed the black faceplate on the Aquero 6 and it obviously matches the color scheme but it also matches a number of components around the outside of the case, the power and reset buttons, the hinges and handles, also the custom paint which has black under the blue pearl which shows up sometimes depending on the light and angle. As always I've really enjoyed building this system and I must say I've enjoyed overclocking this system a bit more than usual. And that was thanks to this 5960X being a golden chip. I was amazed at how far I was able to push it at such low voltages. But also this motherboard, it is a great motherboard to overclock. The stability, including memory stability, is amazing. That sums up this build log. I have a lot more exciting builds coming up, reviews, new segments, and new videos. Remember, if you enjoy our content, it's important that you like and subscribe. It really helps out. And also check the video description for other ways you can help to grow the channel.